Our usual every on this channel for educational purposes only is not intended as financial advice. Let's take a look at Bollinger Bands because it is a time in the market where Bollinger Bands for me are useful. Bollinger Bands are comprised of two components. They're comprised of a moving average, which I'll point out to in a second. And then you'll see an upper and lower band based on two standard deviations above and below that moving average. You can think of it as an envelope, a channel. That's the first step. They were created by John Bollinger on Twitter. Active talks about crypto. Great guy. Give him a follow. Loves an IPA. As you'll see in the uh, further charts down the line, but in this mini chart, you can think of it as a support band, a resistance band, as it's so colored here, green and red, with the 20 in the middle. There's also Bollinger Band width and percent %B. I'll get to that in a second. In this specific example, you'll notice volatility, the standard deviation of the volatility above and below the band there, is super tight as the squeeze is happening and expands as the move is happening. For me, I prefer to use Bollinger Bands really only in low volatility environments. There are people who trade Bollinger Bands extremely effectively and use them in trending periods. I typically don't use Bollinger Bands in trending periods, but that is one way to use them. Usually if I'm looking at Bollinger Bands, it's a bit of a misery index because that means volatility is next to zero. And we've really only had that a few times historically on Bitcoin, those are referred to as super squeezes. We'll talk about that in a second. So let's look further at how this can help tip off the market bias. Uh, there are other tons of articles, right? Definitely read everything because it might speak to you in ways that I'm not. It may illuminate ways to trade this thing that I'm not discussing. But the simplest way to think of it is a measure of volatility around a moving average. Here's the man himself, John Bollinger on Twitter. And just the other day, he talked about Bitcoin. Now, another thing I'll get to is that the settings on B bands are based on 20 periods by default or 20 days by default. You can move that around. I prefer to just go to the weekly. If I'm looking at B bands, like I said, I'm usually not having a good time. It usually feels like a 50 50 coin flip. I will show you historically, like I said, how you can figure out if there's a bias in the market or not. But what he's pointing out here is uh, that super squeeze, not super squeeze, just a generic squeeze in B bands. And softly, what this is saying is after 20 days of a lack of volatility, there's an expectation that there will be some sort of move soon. Okay. That's the key word soon. On top of that, for me, chart patterns are either the secondary or the primary thing I'm looking at most of the time. And that includes coupled with B bands. So I would never just use B bands alone myself to trade anything. I'm definitely always looking for other stuff. You know, I talked about it in the chart patterns video, but you'll notice me pointing out times in Bitcoin's history when we've triangled out, right? When we've just gone flat. So on top of potentially a bias on B bands, we're also seeing a bias on chart patterns. It's unsurprising that typically you see these biases lining up, biases, they're all looking at the same left side of the chart to try to give you some idea of the right side of the chart. But it certainly helps to know a few different things other than just B-bands. So here's Bitcoin daily B-bands, default settings, 20 days, 20 periods, okay? This was the squeeze Bollinger was pointing out a few days ago. Now, to his credit, we did have a move soon after that, which was the Ripple ruling. Does Bollinger Bands know that there's going to be some sort of news event? Of course not. But for me, in my head, the market is ready for something to happen. Okay, when volatility contracts like this, just like it's ready now, volatility is still extremely low. It doesn't always need something to happen. This was the beginning of the year. Look how long on the daily, this is important, <laughs> we contracted, had a fake out in both directions. Eventually, we squeezed even more on B bands and went higher. So for me, on the daily, not super valuable. I prefer it on the weekly. But again, trade it how you want to trade it. This is the daily with 30 instead of 20. Similar to looking at, you know, the weekly B bands would basically be 140, right? Seven times 20. You're just using more and more data, more and more periods back, right? The more you increase that number. 
Now we start to get a little cleaner on the previous, you know, historical examples as far as looking for low volatility, and we are right there right now, right? The, dif the difference between then and now is, sure, we consolidated below that midpoint, midband, for a while, like 30 days. When we eventually did move, we started to consolidate above this moving average. This concept is important for any setting you have. So change it to wherever you want. Make sure it would make sense on backtesting. And if you're looking for a bias in the market, you want to see a squeeze coupled with several periods of price above or below that squeeze to tip you off. Is there a bias? Here, it looks to me, based on these settings, right, that we're leaning bearish. And we can keep going. We can look at other stuff similar to volatility. This is a historical Bitcoin volatility index from BitMEX called BVOL. There's implied volatility that's more like the option side of things. Also just getting crushed on Bitcoin, EVOL, e implied volatility, EVIV, getting crushed on Ethereum. So if volatility metrics are contracting, you're going to see squeezes on V-bands. So if in a period like this, where we're going 20, 30 days without moving realistically, that's when I start to look at V-bands. That's when I start to look at price position relative to the 20 week moving average, trying to see if there's some sort of bias here. Here's another metric you can add onto that B-band width. This is how it looks on the daily, and this is literally measuring the caliber of the Bollinger Bands. Similar to BVOL, IV, whatever, V, right? Um, we can look at it all the way back to 2010. And the period we're in now on the daily is extremely historically at a low point. Also on the weekly, you know, for me, that cleans it up a lot, just going to a higher time frame. Historically, we've been down here since 2010 maybe five times. So volatility is extremely tight right now on higher time frames. That's the key. So that's why it's a perfect time to look at Bollinger Bands. And just as an example of where you can use B band with percent %B, you know, Bollinger will tell you very specific things and trades you can use and setups. For me, I think of percent %B as RSI or a type of oscillator, okay? Sometimes it's a more sensitive RSI. This is just a good example to show a very clear bearish divergence we had at the top in 2021. You're seeing the same thing on percent %B. I don't really look at percent %B too often, but that's one way you can use it. Look for divergences. Um, Bollinger Band width, like I just mentioned, you know, sort of helps me calibrate historically. How boring are we really, right? <laughs> it feels boring. On the daily, on the weekly, historically, what, the, what does this look like? It's most comparable to so far end of 2022. You know, that's the closest thing along with mid 2020, let's say, on the daily. Moving to the weekly, again, I'm always looking at historic moves, back testing. What is it? What has it told you? Has it been any of use at all? Is it noisy? You know, that's the first thing you should look at with any indicator. One thing that popped out at me early on was the strength of the 20 week moving average specifically for Bitcoin especially in 2017, 2016, 2020. If we are above the 20 week moving average, we are more likely than not going to experience higher highs. Okay. That's an unwritten golden rule for Bitcoin. The opposite is certainly true. If we are below that 20 week, we are more likely than not extremely bearish. Okay. Look at 2018, look at 2022. The odds of bullish continuation, here's another way to think of it, are higher above the 20 week the odds of bearish continuation are higher below the 20 week. So at this current time, we have squeeze and Bollinger Bands and we are above the 20 week moving average. Arguably, we've been above since the beginning of the year. So for me, even though I might feel bearish right now, because I do, the Bollinger Bands are saying we will probably break up. That's today, right? In one week, two week, three week, I don't know. We may get tighter. We may start to drift below that 20 week we may start to break below that bottom band. But it is not go time on a trade, if you're trading this, until we are above, above or below, on a close, one of those bands. That's why as they squeeze, the go time entry gets closer and closer and closer on both sides of the coin, right? Now you could say, well, yeah, I know, if we get higher highs, duh, that's probably a long, but this helps you quantify it. All right, let's keep going. Looking at other examples. This was that ascending triangle example 
from the chart pattern video, and you'll notice the entire time, including the fake out on the chart pattern on the very last week, we still remained above the 20 week moving average. And eventually we did break up out of the bands, right? So the bands can certainly help keep you out of trouble, which is something I say a lot for making the wrong decision and thinking there's some sort of bearish bias all of a sudden because this one specific metric broke. It helps add a layer of checks and balances, at least for me, on what's going on. So at the end of the day, it keeps you out of trouble in two ways, really. It tells you volatility is contracting, size accordingly, allocations need to be changed accordingly, leverage needs to be changed accordingly, expectation of anything happening <laughs> needs to be changed accordingly, right? You don't want to be eating fees day after day after day on any open trades if we aren't even close to a Bollinger Band breakout, right? If we're in, once you're in the process of a squeeze, typically that will take a bunch of time. Okay. That'll take days, weeks. Usually we don't just magically start moving. Maybe another unwritten rule to think about in this current time in uh, July, 2023, you know, if you're watching this years from now, thinking, what is this guy talking about? We are so volatile. We are making highs and lows every other day, blah, 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 right? <laughs> This is a different time, future watcher, future listener. Uh, looking at some other historic examples on the weekly, just broadly, one other thing I use is an, a Bollinger Band width overlay. And for me, this is really kind of the most powerful way to look at it. It's colored green if we are consolidating above that 20 week, it's colored red if we're consolidating below. This tells me at this Bollinger Band width, we are comparable to 2016 and we are above the 20 week, right? Not exactly rocket science, but this squeeze is very similar to those squeezes. It certainly feels like it. It feels like 2018 as well. It feels like 2020 where just nothing happens for a long time. <laughs> We're just sitting at the same price for a long time. If I expand the threshold a little bit on Bollinger bandwidth, you know, then we can start to include some of these other periods. This is a great example in 2018. For the most part, there was some noise in there, but for the most part, we were below that 20 week for a year plus before eventually breaking out. And we didn't move right until we had that super squeeze. So that took a long time. This example in uh, 2022 is an interesting one because we had a squeeze. I fully believe this would have eventually actually been an Adam and Eve if FTX didn't blow up. The chart pattern was nearly there. It looked very similar in a sense to 2018, 2019, you know, but uh, SBF had different plans <laughs> and we went lower. So on the weekly bands, this would have told you, okay, it's starting to consolidate above that 20 week moving average, but we didn't expand on the bands until we actually broke down. And one other sort of rule, if you're paying attention here, what you really want to see is multiple weeks. In this case, there was what, six weeks, four weeks, five weeks, five or six weeks here. Just no doubt about a confirmation, right? If you are consolidating on some other chart where you're going above and below the 20 week every other week, and it's telling you we're bullish, we're bearish, we're bullish, we're bearish. For me, that is useless, right? That, that tells you nothing. But if the bands week after week after week have a bias, then that tells me the probability is high that that will eventually lead to continuation. Here's another great example in 2015 where we had an attempt at a breakout and, you know, there's some sort of Bollinger distinction here. He'll tell you, a head fake. Yeah, I forget exactly what he calls it, but this looked like you were good to go. You had consolidation, you had the squeeze, you had a move above, you had a close outside of the bands and you just get crushed, right? That's why I say they always, they always feel 50, 50 and you really want some sort of chart pattern on your side. Even here, you could argue Adam and Eve, right? V U. But to me in this current time, this looks like a head and shoulders. People will say it's not, people will say that's impossible. <laughs> I feel bearish. This looks bearish to me based on the 20 week. We're sort of cliffing. If we start to close below that 20 week, then things for me get considerably more bearish extremely quickly. So that's just, you know, something to watch here. Just randomly on ETH, I was looking the other day. ETH on the monthly chart, one other thing I should mention, all these charts are log. That's why you'll see them look super weird and sort of blown out uh, when they expand. There's a way to fix that. People always tell me and I always forget to actually do that. But if you look at ETH monthly, Bollinger Bands were actually super tight, currently below that 20 week. But this doesn't tell you anything you don't already know, you know. 
so far. It tells you we're tight, we're, vol we're not volatile. It tells you there's probably a pattern in here, which there is. There's all sorts of stuff. Adam and Eve, ascending triangle. Historically, we've needed to continue to consolidate, right? We certainly aren't as tight as we were in 2020. And we certainly aren't above that 20-week moving average yet. So this is an N of 1. It's not really helpful, but, you know, something to watch for as an example. We can also change this to maybe something that makes a little more sense if we look at the 12-month Bollinger Band versus the, what is this, 20-month, right? This may fit your bias better, but we'll see if it actually plays out. You know, we're consolidating above the 20-month, sorry, 12-month moving average. We're consolidating close to those bands. They look like they're ready to break out. So I encourage you to read more about Bollinger Bands. There's certainly a lot more to learn, but for me, they're most useful in this exact time point when you know you're not volatile. How not volatile are we? This is a way to, to quantify it and measure it and compare it to historic periods and look at what happened in those periods and try to set yourself up for something here. One other last thing I'll just mention, trading-wise. Let's say you want to put on you know, a long and a, and a short at the same time or a straddle or some other option strategy. As a stop loss, what you can use is a close outside of whatever period band you're looking at. In this case, if I'm on the weekly bands, if we get a close above or below those bands, I'd use that as a stop loss for one of those trades, right? The opposite trade. So if we close bullish, I close the short. If we close bearish, I close the long. Maybe you don't even open the short until we close below that 20 week moving average. So just something to think about on ways to actually make this useful for actionable trading other than just, you know, keeping you out of trouble. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Happy trading.